Hello everyone, welcome back to another Grand Blue Fantasy Relink video. We just got some huge news about the game, as well as a list of huge changes to all of the characters. We're getting big nerfs and buffs, so let's go over all of that. So starting off with the new content coming into the game, we're going to be getting a couple of new quests, which is the way that we're going to be unlocking Sophon and Twayan, something that I have already mentioned in my video where I covered the livestream details. We're also getting brand new sigils as well as brand new trophies and the ability to bulk transmutate sigils up to 30 at once at the knickknack shack so that is very handy. Now this is where we get into the good stuff. Let's go over some of the combat changes before we talk about each specific character. Environmental factors such as strong winds and ground tremors should no longer interrupt players that have the stout heart effect. And this will also apply to other effects that are essentially all about preventing the enemy from interrupting you. They're just making the game more consistent with these traits which I like. They're also increasing the radius of the stun damage that is dealt to enemies whenever you perform a parry, aka a successful perfect guard, and they're improving its visibility so that other players can see it more easily. And they've also improved the visibility of the damage numbers that hit the damage cap. A lot of players still didn't know that whenever you saw the yellow flashes would indicate that you would be hitting the damage cap, so it's cool that the developers are making it even more apparent. This is a big change in my opinion, they're making it so that the camera correction whenever you have the option set to off is no longer going to automatically change to the person that started the chain burst, which was kind of defeating the purpose of this setting in the first place. They fixed the bug with the Tyranny Sigil that was interacting wrongly with the Skybound Arts. In case you didn't know, Tyranny was actually doubling its effect when it came to the Skybound Arts, which will let you deal a lot more damage than it was intended. They've also fixed a bug with Eugen's sticky grenades that failed to make his SBA gauge go up, but in the same way I do believe that they are also removing some of the interactions that Eugen has with his sticky grenades that allow them to combine with characters like Vayne or Rosetta to deal tons of damage. Party members that have a skill that allows them to revive allies will no longer cast that skill whenever a player that has auto revive enters the critical condition. This was happening a lot to me early on, so it's great to see that this is finally fixed. And they've also fixed the bug that essentially made the player continuously guard despite only pressing the guard button once. Talk about game breaking bugs. But with that being said, let's go over all of the buffs and nerfs. Starting off with the Captain. They have fixed the bug where the damage cap of Decimate would be superseded by the damage cap of other attacks. That along with some of the bugs that were fixed with the Lucilius update was how the Captain, especially Jita, was able with some cancels to deal over 43 million damage. So it's not a direct nerf, but it's going to be something that is going to be felt by the players that were using some of this tech. Next up we have Catalina, and we get a pretty nice quality of life change that was certainly something that made me stay away from her, which was that ground tremors or a strong wind would cancel the Ares summon during the Ares Pact strike, which as you all know is the central point of Catalina's kit, so it is a very big deal that they are addressing it. They have also increased the amount of gauge gain granted by the Ares gauge up mastery node. And they have fixed the bug that, under certain conditions, caused the Guardian's honor traits to not work properly. I was personally hoping for some Catalina buffs, so I am sad to see that she did not receive them. Next up we have Rackham, a character that was essentially gutted off the removal of the aerial shotgun playstyle with the Lucilius update. They've increased the Bullseye Blast damage cap that is based on its charge level, raised the damage cap of well-timed square attacks, and raised the damage cap of launch attacks as well as the skill Bullet Hail. This is frankly all quite nice, they're essentially raising Rackham's damage across the board. Sadly, we don't get the actual numbers for the buffs and the nerfs, but it's a very good buff in my opinion. Now up next we have EO. They have added a new effect to the Enhanced Mystic Vortex Link Time Mastery node that will provide a boost to the Stargate charge speed. Additionally, Concentration now also grants debuff immunity, and whenever EO gains a Mystic Vortex Orb within the Concentration Circle, she will gain the maximum number of orbs instead. So this is actually making Concentration a lot more useful for EO. Whenever you read her skills and the way that the character is played, you assume that you are intended to use Concentration and Mystic Vortex, but in practical terms they weren't very useful, so with this, in combination with the Mystic Vortex having a shorter cooldown, EO will be able to play much more like a Black Mage than I think she was intended. And finally, they've also increased the Flowery 7's damage cap whenever it is fully charged, allowing for EO to deal some truly devastating damage. Eugen is getting a very simple buff by simply increasing the damage cap of the detonator that is based on its charged level. Next up we have Rosetta and there are quite a few changes for her, 
and she is one of the characters that I believe should be buffed the most, so let's go over all of them. They are adding a couple of new effects to the Enhanced Roses Link Time Mastery node, boosting the frequency of the rose attacks, as well as automatically planting the maximum number of roses, which is going to allow Rosetta to be much more effective during Link Time. They're also increasing the damage cap of the attacks that are dealt by the Plantis based on the roses level, much like they are increasing the damage cap of the Spiral Roses and Lost Love based on the level of the plants. These are, much like with Rackham, fantastic buffs across the board that are just going to make Rosetta deal a lot more damage, and when coupled with a couple of bug fixes that she also got, I feel like Rosetta is going to feel amazing to play in the new patch. Now this is a very interesting one. They are buffing Fairy's damage cap for a certain sequence of Fairy's charged square attacks and triangle attacks. And they're also fixing a bug where, under certain conditions, Fairy would be able to summon more pets than intended with Purge Spirits. This feels like a way of the developers telling us to not use the Fairy jumping playstyle as much and try to use her normal charged attacks as well as Onslaught. I'm very curious to see if that is going to end up doing more damage than the jumping playstyle. Now up next we have everybody's favorite Narmaya. We already talked about how they are going to be adding an indicator to the HUD that is going to tell you how many butterflies Narmaya has available at any moment, so that is going to be phenomenal, but on top of that they are also increasing the damage cap of the Dawnfly stance combo finisher as well as the charged attacks, so that is the pink stance which was often neglected. And additionally they are also increasing the Setsuna damage cap that is based on its charge level, because in case you didn't know if you were already hitting the damage cap with Narmaya, you were actually able to simply not charge the Setsuna and just tap the button and you would still be able to hit the damage cap, which is totally not the way that that skill is supposed to work, which is why they are raising its damage cap. Next up we have the best boy Vayne. Vayne is now going to be able to start an attack following a link attack more quickly. I know Rurikan was having a lot of problems with this during the Lucilius raid, and even I myself ran into this problem a couple of times, so it is cool that they are addressing such a small thing. They're also improving the enhanced beatdown gauge link time mastery node by essentially boosting the attack power and damage cap, which it translates to you dealing more damage whenever you are in link time. They're also increasing the damage cap for certain beatdown combos, likely because the best combo for Vayne before this patch was to do a couple of normal attacks and go into the beatdown combo instead of actually doing the full combo and then go into the combo finisher, which is likely what the developers want us to do and why this change is being done. Additionally, they have increased the energy destruction damage cap based on how full the Vayne SBA gauge is, because much like with Narmaya Setsuna, the damage cap was so low to the point that you could use energy destruction even without having any percentage of your SBA gauge and you would still be able to hit the damage cap. So now the skill is going to work as intended, where you are supposed to use it whenever your SBA gauge is full to deal as much damage as possible. And finally, they fixed the bug that caused the enhanced beatdown gauge during link time to not not work properly. Now next up is Percival, a character that was absolutely gutted by some of the changes during the Lucilius update where they got rid of his skill cancels, so I'm very interested to see how they are going to address him. They're increasing the damage cap of Percival's charged attacks, so that is fantastic, that is his biggest damage tool, and they're also increasing the rotor wireball damage cap, which again is Percival's second best damaging tool. It would be a lot better if we had the actual stats, but these are very good buffs. Additionally, the Adrenaline Rush support skill will now grant a proportional boost to the Schlatt's charge speed when charged after attacks that aren't combo finishers. Essentially, you'll be able to perform normal attacks and go into a charged attack much quicker. So it's likely that now if you don't have any skills available, it's actually more beneficial to do a couple of normal attacks before going into a charged attack as opposed to simply doing a raw charged attack all the way. And next up we have Siegfried. They are changing one of his mastery nodes to ensure that Siegfried is always going to perfectly time his attacks during link time, which I think was the whole idea in the first place, so that is good. And additionally, they are increasing the damage cap of the skill for Dragon, as well as the damage cap of certain well-timed attacks. I really hope that this increase is actually meaningful, because Siegfried is one of those characters where you really need to execute those perfectly timed attacks, but even if you do, your damage output isn't really all that good, so I hope that they make him pack a much bigger punch now with this patch. 
And next up we have the truly best boy Cagliostro, they're increasing your attack power and damage cap whenever you are charging your attacks during link time, and have increased the damage cap of the skills Mimic Doll and Alexandria which were the main skills to deal damage other than the Dragon Gap Closer, and they're also increasing the damage cap for certain attacks performed in combo D, likely to address some of the combo cancels which were Cagliostro's best DPS combos. Now as for Yodarha, they are adding a new effect to the enhanced Triple Shroud Link Time Mastery node, making it always perform the shortest combo so that you can deal more damage during lane time. Additionally, they're increasing the damage cap on the successful counters that are triggered by Tit for Tat, as well as the damage cap for Flashing Void and Sky Shatter based on the number of Triple Shroud marks that you have. So overall, pretty nice buffs for Yodarha, and there's not much else to say about him. Now up next we have Zeta, and they're essentially increasing Zeta's damage output by making the Arvest for Mari's status effect more powerful. They're also increasing the damage cap of the Square Loop combos, which is likely intended to reward players that are doing the loop combos, as opposed to only doing 3 loops and going into a combo finisher. So I'm interested in seeing how that is going to play out in some DPS test comparisons. And lastly, they are increasing the Wing Clipper's damage cap, which is the Paralysis attack. Up next we have Azuraga, another character that was heavily affected by the Lucilius update removing some of these skill cancels. They're increasing the damage cap of your triangle charged attacks during link time so that is very nice. And additionally they are broadening the effects of the charged attacks charge faster that is granted by the quick charge trait when equipped by Vazaraga specifically. I believe that this simply means that the quick charge trait is going to be more beneficial on Vazaraga as opposed to other characters. But again we don't have the actual numbers. And finally they have increased the Skybound Arts damage cap. And lastly we have Id and the first paragraph was one of the biggest deal breakers for Id as someone that absolutely loves him. He was my favorite character in the base roster and I love to see this change. They're essentially making it so that environmental factors such as strong winds and ground tremors are no longer going to remove you from God Might whenever you are pressing the triangle button during God Might. Again this is pretty much the same thing that happened with Catalina earlier before and it's just a nice quality of life change that addressed a problem that made the character feel very inconsistent. They've also made it so that during link time, your skill cooldowns will shorten whenever you perform a combo finisher so that is very nice. And it seems as though they have increased the damage cap of all of the skills whenever you are in god might, which is just fantastic because in actual DPS comparison tests I believe that it ended up dealing more damage by simply trying to go into dragon mode as fast as possible and trying to use dragon mode as much as possible as opposed to god might. So these are all amazing changes in my opinion, just a huge damage cap increase across the board for the god might form. And again as someone that loves it, I'm going to love this change. These are all of the buffs and nerfs that we're getting in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink with the latest patch. Let me know if there was something that I missed and look forward to my build videos covering Sofon and Twayen which are going to be dropping very soon. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching, my name is Dark Hero and as always, happy hunting!